although I've been directing some harsh criticism toward, towards Duke Energy, um, no one should be directing their anger toward Tom Williams, who, who's a very nice man. He's, he's just a spokesperson for them. He's not developing their policy. He's just relating what it is. He's the messenger. Um, Duke Energy wants to present a friendly face to the public. But what this giant corporation is doing, in, in, in the process of doing in Cliffside, is in no way friendly to the people of North Carolina. In 2007, Duke Energy, and to be fair, Progress Energy, used their enormous political clout to bulldoze through legislation that ended a 25-year ban on the shady practice of charging ratepayers for construction work in progress on new coal burning and nuclear power plants. So now your money is being spent to commit North, North Carolina to another 50 years of burning coal, hardly just a transition period. Climate change, water shortages, air pollution, water contamination, mountaintop removal, mining be damned, all for the purpose of short-term profit for Duke Energy shareholders. Creating a resilient, distributed, multi entity owned renewable energy grid would greatly benefit our health and the environment. It will also help the general economy of our state as it creates thousands of high paying permanent jobs in the fields of energy efficiency and renewable energy system installation and maintenance. But in all likelihood, it will not help Duke Energy's shareholders who would watch their monopoly on power production and sales slip from their fingers. As viewed through the narrow prism of corporate bottom line philosophy, this set of distributed renewable solutions is simply not practical. And so will go the rhetoric and all those who stand to gain from the status quo, even as the rest of the world grows in distress and alarm. No, there is no such thing as clean coal. And the only constructive role that existing coal plants can offer at this point in meeting future energy demand is their rapid phase out as energy efficiency measures, cons conservation and renewable technologies begin to take over on a grand scale during a national Apollo-like program to transform our energy system. But we have no illusions. We'll have to overcome the power and influence of Duke Energy and other monopolistic energy giants to implement this long-term survival plan. They will not come along willingly. The good news is that a powerful nationwide grassroots, grassroots movement is already underway, and the current political wind is at our backs. That movement is now focusing on cliffside, which has become a national symbol of the bad old energy policies of the past. On April 20th, this movement will converge on Charlotte, North Carolina for a massive demonstration at Duke Energy headquarters, and I hope everyone in this room will join us.